also an internal uh, attached um, dwelling unit, but it was a two bedroom, one bath uh, with a kitchen um, with an addition onto the house rather than uh, sort of remodeling within the exterior walls. So in that case, the building actually increased in size, but you may recall this addition to the rear of the house uh, on a very large lot. It was heavily wooded and not at all visible from the street. But it was actually a mother-in-law suite for the mother-in-law uh, who lived there with one other family member and had their own kitchen, their own door to the outside. Very similar to this case, um, except this one is one of the fewer bedrooms. And what were the conditions on that? Do you remember? Uh, very much the same as these, maintained compliance with the supplemental standards and even the same expiration date. Uh, we did not have the condition number three because there was no driveway. I'm just curious, and I, I, I may be way off. Was there a condition based on the kitchen if the mother-in-law left the residence? I'm just, I remember hearing some, some conversation about that. I don't recall <laughs> that being approved by city council. Mm -hmm. I remember the condition. I don't know whether that city council approved it. We did a condition. Yes, if the mother-in-law moved out, just the kitchen had to go. I'm just talking right about that. I think that got actually forward to city council, but I don't think that is where it landed. We talked about that position. I thought we said that I thought it was all if she left, then that kitchen had to go. The concern was that uh, I know that a lot of the neighbors were concerned that eventually that extra living area would become uh, a rental property. Right. Or Building maybe if the original all removed and it could become a duplex facility. So that was the uh, reason for that removal of the kitchen in case the mother law, you know, were to, uh, to, to die or go somewhere else, that, that, that piece of property could not be self sufficient at its own living for that neighborhood. This at the work session. Um, by definition, the accessory dwelling unit has to have all of the components for a dwelling unit on in space. Um, if this floor plan were arranged differently, if we did not have the kitchen or the kitchen were in a different part of the dwelling, uh, we would not have a two dwelling unit situation here. It would still it would just be extra rooms. Um, but here you've got all the pieces of parts to one dwelling unit, including an outside door. Um, to the outside that makes it stand or have the ability to stand on its own. Um, but keeping track of who is a tenant or an occupant in a particular bedroom is problematic. Um, and I remember it being talked about. I also remember some of that discussion being tied to the internal doorway, whether that doorway would remain. Um, and it was also not just the mother-in-law, but also her son, um, who was a special needs individual. And so it was predicted he would probably outlive his mother and so where he remained, perhaps with a different caregiver or under the care of the rest of the family. Uh, there was a lot of discussion about that. Um, but when I looked at the previous case for reference, I was looking at the final planning certificate as approved by city council. And I don't remember any conditions about the occupants of the dwelling unit. Let me ask you a question a different way. If something were to change in the future in either of these properties, would it be okay for the for the property owner to rent the building and, and use it uh, for real income? One of the first requirements, and it's there in the packet, is the property owner must reside in the primary dwelling unit. The secondary dwelling unit can be occupied by a family member or anyone else. So it could serve as a duplex where well, as long as one is the main unit. Property owner lives in one 
portion and the other portion. And the other portion has to be subordinate to the main one. In terms of size, it cannot exceed 1,200 square feet. And no additional zoning or classification of the property is required? Correct. Okay. This is sort of an in-between a single-family residence and a duplex. In some neighborhoods this fits well, some neighborhoods it does not. I mean, I know they're allowed, but it does not, by all means, does this have to have an exterior door, an accessory door? To be its own dwelling unit, it does. If this did not have its own door, the only way in and out would be to come through the dwelling unit that's there now, and it would just be one dwelling unit. It could not stand on its own. Commissioners, any other questions for staff on this request? If not at this time, we will have anyone wishing to come forward to speak in favor of this request to come forward at this time. And please state your name and your address, please. Good evening. My name is Rob Plum. I'm 1007 North Patterson Street. My work address is on 610 Mack Drive in the city. I'm an attorney with Langdale Wallace, and I represent the applicant, Charles Bennett. Let me just say off the top that there's never been any intention for anything but single-family use for this property. Mr. Bennett simply wanted another kitchen in the house. The fact that it is configured in such a way that it meets the definition of an accessory dwelling unit is coincidental, but to the extent we need a conditional use permit to satisfy people's concerns, that's why we're here. We're aware of the conditions the staff is proposing, and we're fine with those. This is a single-family residence. There's been discussion that it's been built for some kind of commercial use or an assisted living facility or something like that. None of that is on the table, and that's one of the reasons why we're here. With this permit, the staff is permitted to use a single-family residential, and that's really what it comes down to. I'm happy to answer. We've got the architect here who designed it. We'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. Any questions for the presenter? Well, kind of related to my last question, would there be an issue with getting rid of the exterior door, and does that do away with this permit at all? It stands to remove an exterior door change to a two-one dwelling unit, and that would be a remedy, I think, for the applicant if the CUP were denied. Which, you know, it's built. Unless their permit's been pulled, construction is finished, you know, it's not necessary to be in compliance with the requirements. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else here wishing to speak in favor of this request? Anyone else wishing to speak in favor of this request? Please come forward. There being none, is there anyone here wishing to speak? I'm sorry, sir. I apologize. You're speaking against, sir, or in favor? No, it's qualified. I'm Charlie Satterwhite. I'm at the 3116 Northfield Road, and I'm speaking today on behalf of the Eager Neighborhood and the Eager Subdivision. We're not objecting to this conditional use permit, but we feel like there's some unfinished business here. Certainly the driveway was put in place, created a blind curve, which is a very, very dangerous situation. As of yet, that has not been resolved. I just want to make sure that that's going to get resolved. Matt, you said earlier that the portage or whatever has been altered? Yes, sir. That has been. It now complies with the zoning regs in terms of setbacks. All that remains is the lack of permit for work done on the driveway and in the city right of way. That's a separate issue regardless. It needs to be rectified with the city engineers. 
So what is there now is okay with the city moving forward. What is there now has to be inspected and approved by the city. But, but the, the cutback the Port of Labor The driveway work does. The building does comply with the city. Right? <coughs> they have done so far is put some good parking signs on that side of the road. But even one of those has been taken down the right road at the very worst place, right in the right And that's been down about three or so weeks now. It's a bad situation. <coughs> very, very, very bad. Commissioner, any questions or discussion for the presenter? Thank yeah, you, sir. Oh, just one Commissioner question. Your, your concern is mainly with the driveway? Safety of the whole area. And that was created by making a circuit okay. drive. Whereas before it was just one way. And if I may ask, Not a land use consideration, but it is a permitting issue. Mm -hmm. It needs to be used. <coughs> the administrative level for the city. Correct. Please refer to the site plan I put up on the screen and in your packet. You see, it has two driveway entrances onto the street as a circular driveway. Mm -hmm. um, the entrance to the right, which is on the east side, that was existing. What has been added is the one on the left side or west side of the property. Uh, there's some vegetation between this lot and the lot to the west, and as you see, it's on the inside of a curve, um, not the best of visibility on that curve. Uh, but some of the vegetation has been trimmed back previously, that has helped, um, but it's a concern that the neighbors have raised with the engineering department. And that is something that's been worked into. That situation has been worse in the last several years because green weather that time didn't go <coughs> as part of that house there. But uh, since they've uh, taken it all the way down to the country level, and now people can cut off the great big corner of the traffic light down there, eager and comfortable, by just cutting through green metal. And they really come to get a mission. You're not going to be able to see a, a car park to stop right around the other side of that line there. Stop. Either they're going to go up in somebody's yard on the other side of the street, or uh, they're going to have an accident. Any other questions, Officer? Thank you, sir. <coughs> Is there anyone else here wishing to speak against this request? Anyone else wishing to speak against this request? That is something to get into the Fair Housing Act and start trying to limit people who live or not live in the house. If you want someone putting a requirement on your house that you can't rent it out. Mm -hmm. But being single family, you know, which is the current use and the current intended use, you know, that it is single family or extended family, but uh, turning it into, uh, you know, future uh, rental property doesn't seem that different. Uh, the main unit has to be owner occupied. Uh, that is a requirement. And if it remained a single house, the owner could even rent out the main dwelling. That's in this exactly case, that actually size their hands. That's the concern that I have about because it is a single family area, and uh, you know, we would like to be preserved. Question for the presenter. Commissioner Lang, any questions? Is there any parking for 
bacteria associated with an excess of blood, does that increase the and they do meet the criteria. If you look on page five in your packet, all the way down to the last supplemental standard, which is number 11 on that list at the bottom of the page. An accessory dwelling unit shall have at least one parking space in addition to the parking spaces required for the primary dwelling unit. Um, this property has a very large driveway, even without the expansion that can accommodate multiple vehicles. That is way beyond any requirement for a single family residence. So one more space, there's already multiple spaces there. So they very easily meet that requirement. That requirement is in for situations where you have small houses on small lots with a very short driveway that can hold one car. If you're going to add an accessory dwelling, you need to add a parking space. Here, we've got parking for several vehicles already. I would say I'm generally in favor of this. The, the point I've been trying to make with some of these questions is I think we could get better to everybody's objectives here if we somehow in the future or in amendments to the LDR thought about <coughs> making accessory dwelling units only accessible by interior doorways rather than exterior. Because you, you yourself said this is kind of in the middle of a duplex and a single family. But also remember this includes the detached accessory dwelling. Right. Well, maybe we break out the difference between the interior accessory dwelling and the detached. <coughs> because it, you see the, you see the it's a policy issue. I mean, even in the supplemental regulation of the guards, if the accessory dwelling has a separate entrance, not the shadow. <coughs> so it, it's not necessarily a requirement. But it seems to me more likely if somebody was going to do an interior accessory building and they had an interior, they would be more likely to have someone either related to them or be more likely to use it for the purposes we all would like to see it used for rather than renting it out to whoever and make it more likely to not be Just a statement. It has nothing really to do with this, but in the future we should consider something like that. Understood. If there be none, we will accept the motion on this request at this time. Maybe we recommend approval of the request of the city. Okay. We have a motion and a second. All that with the conditions. With the conditions. Yes. Okay. How did you get that? Okay. So we have a motion by Commissioner Colson, second by Commissioner Clinton. All in favor, seek by the raise your right hand. Okay, so it's a 6-0 approved. 